Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gabesty here. This is the Heroic DPS Guide for the Fallen Protectors. And as always, you can click on the annotations at the bottom of the screen there to check out any of the other videos related to this encounter. So the most important consideration as a DPS player for this fight is generally target priorities and maximizing your DPS. The Berserk time for this fight is 10 minutes exactly. So at that point, you're pretty much going to wipe very soon after. Uh, now, this is not an extreme DPS requirement, but it is significant enough that you have to focus on, you know, any little extra thing you can do to improve your DPS overall, even at times, often sacrificing damage to the single priority target that may be the current active target. So what I mean by that is whatever your raid's priority is for the bosses, for example, say you start with Sun first and do her Desperate Measure first, and then Rook second, and then He third, which is what we're doing, uh, oftentimes you'll want to sacrifice single target DPS for higher overall damage because all damage is effective damage on this fight. There is not a single target that you can deal damage to that is not progressing you along into the, you know, basically winning the fight. So even if you do slightly lower damage to the primary target at the time, this will often be a, a net gain if you do overall higher DPS in total. What this generally means is multi-dot classes should take advantage of that, and cleave classes should take advantage of cleave. This relies a little bit on your positioning, or I should say a lot on your positioning, especially for cleaves. But if your raid is doing it properly, you should always have at least Rook and Sun stacked up near one another in the center so that you can cleave off them. And if possible, you'll also want all three bosses stacked up during your Bloodlust or other big DPS phases. Now there's one exception to this, this general rule where I suggest you shouldn't attack the primary target exclusively. And that is during the Desperate Measure phase for uh, He Softfoot. So when the Embodied Anguish is active, then you do want to prioritize this target above all others because that, uh, that uh, target has a lot of health and if you wait too long to kill it, it's going to rotate through your entire raid and kill everyone. So that is the only time that you really are recommended to focus exclusively on a single target and ignore your you know, multi-target uh, sort of attacks at that point. But otherwise, even during the Desperate Measure phase for Rook or for Sun, uh, you can freely do damage to multiple targets and not necessarily have to prioritize a single uh, important target at the time. Uh, and in, on Heroic, in fact, for Rook, all three of the embodied spawns during his in, uh, Desperate Measure phase share health. So you cannot single target one of them down anyway, even if you wanted to. So again, all these, these reasons sort of um, promote the idea of multi-target attacks, improving your overall DPS. So I always like to talk about some avoidable damage uh, that DPS players can avoid in all these guides. And there's plenty of that on this fight. Uh, there are a few things to focus on. So the first and probably most important is Shaw Seer from uh, Sun Tenderheart. This will generally only target ranged players, so melee should not need to worry about this being a target on, on them. But if it's targeting you, you're going to want to be away from other players. On Heroic especially, this damage ramps up very quickly. Uh, in addition to that, because it ramps up quickly, if you're capable of interrupting the Shaw Seer, you should do so. By interrupting it halfway through the cast, you'll mitigate the vast majority of the damage. But if you interrupt it right away, she'll just recast it. So interrupting Shaw Seer halfway through will mitigate a ton of damage, regardless if it's targeting you or another player. Uh, the other big things to avoid happen during the Desperate Measure phases, specifically during Rook's uh, phase when the Inferno Strike is active. You need to stack up, if you have Inferno Strike, with the melee group. So basically the entire raid should be stacked up with that fire debuff so that you can split the damage. Additionally, any player capable of interrupting during this phase should interrupt the Embodying Gloom when it casts Corruption Shock. This does over 300,000 damage to the target and players nearby. So interrupting the Gloom is extremely important. Other than that, Dodge the barrels that uh, Rook throws when he's normally active. And make sure you don't stand in poison clouds. These are dropped pretty frequently by Mr. Softfoot. 
And when you're targeted by the mark of the anguish or the embodied anguish, when Softfoot goes into his desperate measures, uh, make sure you rotate your personal cooldowns to help survive that. And then once you can no longer hold it, that is your cooldowns are about to run out, pass it to the next player in the rotation. This should be a player that has not been targeted prior, but otherwise it should not matter the order. So, believe it or not, that really covers everything for the Heroic DPS Guide. Uh, again, just focus on doing maximum DPS to multi-targets, even sacrificing single-target DPS in the majority of situations. Again, the exception, generally speaking, will be the Embodied Anguish only. That's really the only target that needs to be focused, first and foremost, above all else. But otherwise, take full advantage of your multi-target target, you know, cleave attacks to meet the overall Berserk uh, requirement for this fight. And then do your best to help interrupt Shah Seer and the Gloom's cast and, uh, you know, avoid standing in bad stuff and you should get it. So that's the Heroic DPS Guide for the Fallen Protectors. As always, good luck and thanks for watching.